Uh, this question has been uh, bothering me lately and I wanted to get this uh, discussed sooner rather than later. Uh, much fuss is being made out, uh, about uh, the problem of hoarding, of stuff being uh, getting out of control, of having to dispose, having uh, to do something about it. But um, for how many of you out there um, afflicted with the problem of uh, stuff getting out of control uh, is the hoard, uh, the hoarding, um, the first and the only problem. Uh, I know for me it isn't. Uh, it's not the first problem, it's not the original problem, it's not the only problem. And in the absence of other circumstances, if it were just me, uh, on my own time, on my own terms, um, I wouldn't have even gotten to uh, a horde of this size, uh, this level of clutter, this um, accumulation, this backlog. Uh, it's not the first and not the only problem. And uh, I'll bet that's going to be the case for a large number of people out there. I would even guess majority. Uh, I know that uh, books on hoarding do acknowledge generally that uh, other conditions exist um, together with hoarding for those they uh, study. Uh, but focus is still primarily on hoarding. And uh, that really bothers me because if you're not treating the primary problem or problems, if you're not treating the uh, the cause of symptoms, but sim symptoms instead, then that's just not going to get very far and that's solving the wrong problem and often by the wrong methods. Uh, I wanted to, uh, to put it out there and to invite uh, comments about though uh, about your own circumstances if you're willing to share if you can say what's uh, what are other complications in your life that uh, contribute to stuff getting out of control much focus is being put on on dealing with the horde uh, and not enough on those circumstances often i see to the point of ignoring those other circumstances. And it's it's just taken for granted that we need to deal with the hoard, we need to deal with the hoarding, but not those other circumstances. And those other circumstances can be significant. Um, I know from my own experience, um, and I can just make that uh, projection to a lot of other people having similar uh, circumstances that there there can be a wide variety of uh, factors that could let's say prevent proper flow of stuff whatever your processing style whatever your preference for keeping or discarding possessions um, unless you agree to wholesale discarding you probably prefer to deal with them. And uh, it may be that life circumstances are really not favorable towards that. And there can be, can be so many different factors. There could be interpersonal conflict, relationship difficulties with your significant other, with other fam family members. There could be other conditions like um, OCD, there's plenty of different conditions that could impact uh, your processing processing style, processing ability, and generally uh, performance, uh, being able to work, to maintain attention. 
there's a lack of time there is um, overload from uh, personal or day job work there's um, um, financial trouble there is uh, conditions like autism which incidentally I may or may not have we are examining that question with my uh, therapist and that's kind of so far what we're seeing is it's kind of um, on the boundary but uh, generally so many different uh, conditions may impact the processing of stuff that uh, uh, not mentioning and examining those circumstances uh, it just seems wrong and uh, incomplete and concerning uh, for example when i started consulting on the subject of the hoard uh, and, and, and the hoarding my own hoarding i soon realized that uh, attempting to deal with the hoard and the hoarding uh, with the therapist wasn't doing much for me i didn't need it i didn't want it there was nothing that i lacked in my processing ability that required intervention that required at least that type of help i know how to categorize i know how to uh, process i know how to declutter i know a whole lot of things so soon i told uh, that i'd rather work on those other problems with this therapist i told to the ter therapist that there's other stuff that needs to be worked on uh, more than hoarding and uh, thankfully uh, she understood and uh, we uh, proceeded to do just that and it was more helpful so i imagine that's gonna be the case for a lot of other people probably the majority but i wish to hear from people as well if you uh, can share in the comments that would be perhaps helpful to get that out there uh, this problem also happens in literature in the books uh, just for one fresh example i've been uh, reading slash listening to this uh, book called buried in treasures uh, just like this that's the cover and there was this one passage that i came across that really jumped out at me as being really really unjust really really missing the point and going completely on the wrong tangent or ignoring the glaring problem that's quite evident and i'll read that passage and then I'll comment let me find it first so they quote this uh, example of a hoarder having the wrong reaction and uh, a less than constructive reaction but let's examine uh, quoting uh, Bill's adult daughter came to his house yelling and nagging at him to get rid of his possessions. When she left, Bill felt angry and thought, no one's gonna tell me what to do. He responded by going out and acquiring more items. Uh, on one hand, Bill was making a statement that he was not going to be controlled by someone else. On the other hand, uh, through this behavior, Bill ultimately was only hurting himself by adding to his clutter. End of quote. So let's examine. You can see the concern with the clutter and with Bill's behavior in this, in this, in this quote, in this book. But let's zoom out a little bit and uh, think. Uh, let's, let's read that again. Bill's adult daughter came to his house yelling and nagging. 
Hmm. Yelling. Yelling counts as abuse. And nagging is also not great. And nagging is also, at best, uh, categorized as uh, a toxic behavior. So, but not a single mention of that is being made here. Instead, focus is still on Bill's reaction to it and the hoarding. And it goes on like that. And if we paint the picture a little bit in more detail with this particular passage, just, just imagine, improvise, um, extrapolate. So Bill's adult daughter is yelling and nagging at him, abuse. She came, abused him, left. I'm willing to bet that this isn't the first nor the last time that that happened. Uh, Bill's adult daughter, not only did she have a habit of yelling and nagging, because you don't come home yelling and nagging unless you have, have a habit of yelling and nagging. I'll bet that this adult daughter has been doing that for a long, long time. And that furthermore, it didn't even start with her. It probably started with her mother. Chances are good. It's her mother, Bill's uh, wife, that has been yelling and nagging even longer or was yelling and nagging. Maybe, maybe they divorced, maybe something. But I'll bet that this whole business of yelling and nagging has been happening for a long, long, long time in that home. And even furthermore, chances are good that it preceded the hoarding. It, pre it may have preceded the uh, hoard developing to disastrous proportions. It may have preceded the hoarding entirely. It may have been that... Uh, yelling and nagging in general was the norm in that household and as well as plenty of other problems this is just just uh, improvising and uh, fantasizing about it just, just sort of imagining inventing but um, i hope this illustrates that we really need to be looking at the original problems and those other problems first and foremost because solving uh, just hoarding just focusing on just hoarding is fighting symptoms it's not fighting necessarily the original condition it's kind of like you have a cold and the doctor is treating you for snoot or whatever you know come uh, sneezing uh, runny nose whatever symptoms instead of the cold uh, for sure i'm not saying that in 100 percent cases uh, hoarding will be secondary to other things there will for sure be uh, circumstances cases where hoarding is the original problem where in, even in the absence of all these uh, stresses and constraints, um, a horde developed to a disastrous proportions. There's, uh, there may be issues intrinsic to a, a person doing the hoarding regardless of other circumstances, difficulties with processing, inability to organize, combined with uh, perhaps higher than normal retention and uh, uh, desire to process things more thoroughly. But whatever the case, uh, that's those aren't the cases I'm talking about at the moment. Uh, I'm talking about these other cases where hoarding is secondary to a lot of other stuff uh, please share in the comments if if you will um, what the deal is uh, as you see it and um, 
I hope to be uh, of help with this uh, with this problem through this project uh, by sharing at least some of the solutions I've come up with for for organizing for decluttering for handling things for uh, the philosophical sides of it. I will not be able to address those other problems because that's that's just difficult even even for my own problem shortage of free time of time available for dealing with things can also be a big problem uh, having free time having spare time i view that as essential as indispensable if you don't have free time, uh, discretionary time at your disposal, then all bets are off. It's a problem. It's unhealthy. Nobody should be having that situation. Unfortunately, in this, uh, in this time and place, it's far too common. If you're overworked, um, trying to make ends meet, if... Um, for one reason or another, you uh, dedicate all, your, all of your time and energy to your day job uh, or, and or doing overtime or side gigs or if you uh, are having relationship trouble like Bill um, because if you have family members or a significant other or someone in your vicinity who is prone to yelling and nagging, that can very quickly destroy all of your free time, all of your attention, energy, and um, a lot of things start failing real fast when that's happening. And it just cascades in all directions. That's really, really... Uh, difficult to deal with things when there's conflict, stress happening around you. Um, it's just an unenviable situation to be in. You need time to, to get things done and yet you can't and there's people yelling at you because you can't get things done. It's, it's just a catch-22. Now, um, I can't do much or anything for those other problems that someone might be experiencing. Uh, I can only share the methods I found that work when it comes to dealing with stuff, advice, uh, methods, uh, tips, tricks. Uh, I mostly wanted to raise awareness of those other issues surrounding the hoarding situation. And uh, at least we can begin to uh, pay attention and to deal with those um, as a first step. We need to become aware and uh, recognize them fully for what they are. I didn't say this was gonna be easy, uh, but one step at a time. Let's be. Let's do what we can. It's difficult enough dealing with stuff, but when there's these other circumstances uh, impacting your uh, your every aspect of your life, that's just double difficult. But let's just see what we can do. The first step is to identify the issues involved and then maybe when maybe then we can begin dealing with them constructively uh, by the way i don't wish to imply that uh, the hoarder is always necessarily completely innocent and in all of this uh, first of all uh, even in our example from the book and our imaginary extrapolation from that, uh, Bill may have done his fair share of yelling, um, or even may, he may have originated it. 
it may have started with him. Uh, I don't wish to imply that I am uh, doing everything perfectly or have always done everything perfectly. I certainly didn't. I made my uh, fair share of mistakes and uh, I didn't always know even as much as I do now. Uh, some of these insights are a relatively uh, recent uh, development as well as uh, some of the, of the methods I just discovered uh, just recently. Um, also, it's been said that um, hoarding may be an abuse in and of itself if uh, uh, living space uh, or uh, facilities or uh, safety of other family members is uh, jeopardized by it. That's also a concern. Uh, but at the same time, abuse can be mutual. Uh, let's just be uh, doing our best to be civilized and to uh, uh, do the right thing uh, in each uh, in each case, uh, I think uh, yelling, nagging, and uh, uh, other such emotional abuse is never okay, uh, regardless of reasons. Uh, so uh, let's not be doing that to others, and uh, let's take note and uh, try to cope with it as best we can if it's uh, coming in our direction. That's it. Just wanted to get that conversation going. This isn't any kind of solution. This is just food for thought. Uh, let's reflect and examine. That's it. Bye for now.